So apologies for the quality of this video, it's a bit different. I did try making an organized video, but I didn't like the results of what I was doing, which frustrates me. I love Caesar 3, it influenced how I play City Builders. So I jotted down my basic points, threw together a narrative and a video. Apologies if it feels thrown together, but I didn't want to wait to thank the makers of and explain what I got out of... Emperor, Rise of the Middle Kingdom. Like its predecessor, Caesar, Zeus, uh, Pharaoh. It's a game like SimCity or City Skylines about building cities and expanding, but it's something much more than that and something that I really, really am thankful to have experienced. Because you're not just building bigger cities, but you're also not just encouraged, but required by the mechanics of the game to help your citizens to self-actualize, to meet their needs. You might have seen, if you took a social teaching or a psychology class, this. This pyramid is the diagram for Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is a general diagram, a rough diagram, but a general picture of how human beings pursue their various needs, beginning with their physical needs like sleep and eating and thirst, uh, all the way up to what is called self-actualization, which is the, the need to do what you feel you were put on earth to do. So, you're not actually, of course, self-actualizing anyone, and you can tell this because the cities run way too perfectly in this game. If you can see what my city blocks look like, this is the result of game mechanics from perfect people doing what they are told. This is not, of course, how cities work in the real life. However, that does not mean that this is a bankrupt simulation by any means. As a monarch of perfect citizens, I may only be simulating need fulfillment, but this does make this game an exercise, at least of my desire, if not of my imagination, of how I can help others to be fulfilled. Seeing that it does roughly follow or evoke the individual need process, considering you go from bamboo mats, which require water and food and religion in order to transform into anything like decent housing. And then from decent housing, you go to meeting your social needs, the need for entertainment, and the need for better food, perhaps as a status symbol, perhaps just to get more nutrients in the diet, to getting better expressions of religion. Such as, well, in this game, in Emperor, Taoism and Buddhism fill the role of a more superior religion. It's not something I tend to emphasize very strongly, but in order to get the high-level housing, in order to get the good ratings, in order to in order to win the game, you have to care about these things in your citizens. You need to care about their quality of life and their ability to become the best citizens they can be. This is fascinating to me and something that I've truly appreciated about every game in the city building series from Caesar 3, actually Caesar 2, but Caesar 3 really codified a lot of the principles of these games all the way up to Children of the Nile and Caesar 4, which are very different games entirely, but makes me look at city building in a completely different way from Sim City, where I feel like I'm not really emphasized, I'm not really made to emphasize care for my citizens so much as keeping my rating up or just being the local complaint line. A very different approach is taken in Caesar 3, Emperor, and the rest of the series. Not only are complaints leveled to you, but in the walkers that you see on the street, in the quality of your housing, in the quality of the parks and paths, 
not to mention your treasury, you get to see not only is your city expanding and growing, but your people are getting their needs met, and they're happier, and they're thankful. That's very fulfilling to see. Still more fulfilling is seeing that your happy citizens are able to produce goods for you, which you, in turn, can use to help other cities. Yes, diplomacy is a thing in this game, and it's such an important part of this game. Because online, in Emperor, unlike any of the previous uh, editions of this game, you can conquer some cities, you can also drown them in goods and in favors and in goodwill, and bring them into your little self-fulfillment party. You can help them to get the things that they need so that they can be happier and more productive and more fulfilled. This is a magical thing about Emperor for me, because it takes the care and compassion you have to have for your citizens and transfers that to the people outside your borders. More than once, I have managed to sway the mortal enemies of the Chinese, the Xiongnu Empire, as it's called in this game, and I have managed to make them not only my vassal by conquering them, not only a happy rival, but my ally. Perhaps this is just a fantastic narrative that I like to believe because I'm a relatively liberalized American who believes in the power of diplomacy. But it's a power that I think is worth emphasizing. The ability to improve people's lives and make them happier because they're getting what they need is something that I find lacking in SimCity and in City Skylines. But that's vibrant in Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom. Instead of just being about expansion and about getting more people under my dominion, I can make people happy. That is awesome. As good as Emperor and Caesar and all the rest are at this though, there is another game that is even better, and it's the one I've been playing. Catch you next time with a video on Tropico.